first two images I took, one was of the Pinwheel Galaxy M101, and uh, last week I took an image of a carrying its chain, to show those images there. It came up not too bad. Um, I'm using my Sharp Star 76mm, and just like uh, Thor's helmet there, this is definitely not uh, what you'd consider a Galaxy um, imaging telescope, but uh, I'm waiting on the, on the mount use one of my bigger telescopes, so for now I'm kind of stuck with this, so I'm not going to let clear night go, I'm going to try and take an image anyway, we'll see what happens. Yeah, tonight I'm actually going after a cool target, it's called uh, the Leo Triple, and obviously given the name, it's in the constellation Leo, I'll pop a picture up here, where it's located, this is just sort of in the eastern sky, and it'll go towards the south as the night goes on. One of the nice things about this target, too, is it's pretty easy to find. It's right near a bright star, uh, just underneath it, and uh, that always makes it so much easier when you're not using a go-to mount, like I am with this star tracker. Uh, we have to find these targets manually with our eyes, so uh, I always appreciate an easy-to-find target, because sometimes that can be the most frustrating part, uh, is trying to find a target. Sometimes it takes me an hour, if it's a really sort of... Um, target that's sort of in the middle of the sky with no big stars around it, it can be a real challenge. Um, so, I always appreciate an easy one like this. But this is a really cool target because um, it's three uh, galaxies, but what's uh, interesting about it is that they're actually, they really are close to each other. And so as a result, they're, they're interacting with each other. Each other's gravity is pulling on one another. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when you get multiple galaxies in a shot, you know, one is many light years behind, uh, further away, and one's many, many light years closer, and even though you see them in the same shot, they're not really that close to each other in reality. But for this one, I don't know their exact distance, but they're close enough that they're, the gravity each one is creating is, uh, is having an effect on the others. And so, um, that's pretty cool, you know. So, um, we'll see how it turns out. Um, it's funny that when I first started setting up tonight, as soon as I brought out the, the tripod and all that, of course a huge cloud rose over. And they were calling for clear skies right until about 1 a.m. So I thought, oh boy. But anyway, I brought, I brought my kid out and um, I started setting up. I couldn't even pull the line because Polaris was not visible. So what I did was, and this is a tip that you can do as well, um, rather than waste time and just sit there waiting, I put the cap, left the cap on my telescope and started taking the darts. You know, normally I do that at the end of the night and that's a, you know, another whatever 30, 40 minutes you're going to tack onto your night. But I had time to kill, and uh, I had let my telescope cool down and let the camera cool down so the sensor was, you know, at ambient temperature, and I took my darts. So that's one last thing I had to do, and it worked out perfectly. By the time they were done, the clouds were moving over, and uh, I was able to start imaging. So that's a tip, you know, whatever. even if you're in the middle of a session and clouds roll over and you know it's going to clear again, just pop your the lid on the cap on your telescope start taking your darts, why not? Might as well make use of the time while you're waiting for the clouds to, to roll over again. And uh, so this is actually my second night at imaging this target, the Leo Triple. I was out last night and uh, it was really clear, but man, was it windy. There were like 46, 47 kilometer hour gusts. And um, I had both garbage cans, both recycling bins on each side of the star tracker just trying to deflect that wind. Fortunately, it calmed down a little towards the end of the night. Um, so hopefully, I haven't even looked at those at the data yet. Hopefully, most of it's usable. I took, uh, I think, th just just under four hours. So, you know, I'm hoping to be able to use at least three hours of that. And then tonight, if I can get another two or three, uh, you know, that'll be good. I'll be happy. I'll be happy with that. Maybe a total of you know, five to six hours, which should be enough for this target. It's, you know, you can sink a lot of time into it. The problem is these are really small galaxies, especially with this little tiny telescope. Um, so you're not, I don't, I'm not expecting a ton of detail, though I would like to get, you know, a little bit. One of the cool things you'll see, hopefully, in the end of this video, when I show the image, the final image, is uh, the hamburger galaxy, that, as it's referred to. It's the one on the left. And you notice that it's a different shape than the other two. And the reason is because the other two are sort of face-on, spiral galaxies 
but the one on the left, the hamburger, is um, actually an edge-on. So we're seeing it from here on Earth as an edge-on galaxy. So that's why it looks sort of thin and narrow. So pretty cool. Um, you know, a little bit of a different uh, aspect of seeing these things that we're normally used to. Um, there are a few other ones that are well-known. The Sombrero Galaxy and uh, the Needle Galaxy. But they're a lot more rare than, than, the, than the face on spiral galaxy, so that's one reason I like this this target as well. So we'll see how it goes tonight. So far so good. I'm gonna keep my they are saying it's gonna cloud over a little bit later, but uh, you know, right now it's actually really nice. The wind really died down from last night. And I only have one garbage can and one recycling bin on the chat, so hopefully that does the trick. Thanks so much guys. So I should mention too, I'm I'm shooting sixty second exposures. ISO 400, so I actually lowered it a little bit this time, and uh, four seconds in between, and as I mentioned, I'm going for five to six hours, so, and the filter I'm using tonight is the CLS CCD by Astronomics, so it's, uh, last night was new moon, which means uh, no moon at all, which is obviously great for astrophotography, particularly when you're doing faint, tiny galaxies, where moonlight can really interfere, um, your image of them. And also, that, as I mentioned in my filters video, that astronomic CLS CCD is a, it's just a light pollution, a light pollution suppression filter, so it's not going to block out the moon. So, this is really the perfect two nights to be using for a target like this in borderline total. So, anyway, hopefully it turns out. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. See you on the next one. Take care.